Okay. okay. Well, thank well, you thank all, you all for, for coming. coming. This, this is, is a presentation called Into, Into Our World, World, and it's and about it's empowering and facilitating, facilitating community outreach, outreach and evangelism in our churches. churches. Um, um, first, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the current state of evangelism, and then our responsibility as leaders, and then how we how do we move from leadership to action, and then how can we develop a strategic plan for our own churches. Okay? The bad, the bad news, news is, is only 1% of adults, uh, Christian, uh, Christian adults, adults believe that they have the gift of evangelism. evangelism. What, what does, does that, that mean for our churches? churches? That, in that in a church, church of 100 people, people the pastor's, pastor's the only, only one, one with the gift. Yeah. 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 And, that and that might explain, explain a little bit of the stagnation in our evangelistic efforts, or explain why our members are less likely to participate in some evangelistic things. The good news is, you don't, you don't have, have to have, have the gift of evangelism <laughs> to reach other people with the love of Jesus. According to the Barna Group, 55% of born again Christians do assert that they have shared their faith in the last 12 months. So your, your people are sharing, half of them anyway. Now, now, the most, most utilized, utilized methods, methods of evangelism, of evangelism the, first the first thing most people do is crisis, crisis prayer. They've got a friend in crisis, 78 percent. Hey, they're like, hey, Lord, let, let me pray for, for you. And, and then you've got 74 percent. That's lifestyle evangelism. Lifestyle evangelism is living in a way that would impress non-Christians and would make them inquire, hey, why do you do that? What do you, you know, oh, you don't eat that, you don't go this place, or what have you. And then 69% use the Socratic evangelism method. Now, this is kind of a start of a conversation uh, with a non-Christian concerning moral or spiritual matter. And then, and then continuing, continuing to, ask to ask questions, questions without, without telling them they're right or wrong, wrong but continuing, continuing to ask questions to get them thinking, thinking. and even and challenging them to go, to go deeper uh, in, their in their thinking, thinking and, to and to understand, understand the implications of it. 50% of people, they, they use moral, moral confrontation. confrontation. They're, telling They're telling somebody, hey, you shouldn't do this, this. And, this and this is why, why you know, this biblical basis, basis why they shouldn't do what they're doing. And uh, they also introduce an alternative. And then there's event-based strategies. 49% of people bring a non-Christian to church, and 45% might invite someone to a outreach event. Among young adults, uh, they're, uh, they're most, most likely, likely to use, use the Socratic, Socratic method, method. Uh, uh, and, and they, they also, also witness via email, text, text messages, messages, and personal, personal notes. notes. They, they are, are the least likely, likely to go out and, and pass out tracts, and they're, and they're least, least likely, likely to use moral, moral confrontation, confrontation or street, street preaching, preaching because, because this is a generation, generation that really finds that offensive, offensive. To, go to go and say, hey, you're wrong for doing that. That's not something that this generation will do. So, so if, if we're going to be evangelizing in the future, future one of the one things, of the things that, that is most necessary is for ministries, ministries to prepare people, people to be effective to share their faith, their faith um, by, by enabling young adults, young adults to carry out knowledgeable, knowledgeable conversations, conversations about, about faith and about, and about what, what it means to our, our daily, daily lives, lives, how, how it, it, the, the implications, implications it has for our personal struggles, struggles how, how to interact beyond, beyond the level of getting, getting saved. saved. People, People don't, don't just need to get, get saved. saved. They, they need, need education, education that, that will be, be crucial for future, future outreach, outreach efforts, efforts, okay? okay? Now, now, when we talk about leadership, leadership when we talk when we about, about any kind of effort that you do in your church, leadership is really one, one of the, the most important, important things, things to consider. consider. Today's, Today's leaders, leaders must actively pursue their role as a servant. servant. They've, They've got to serve, serve their followers or your members. members. You, you serve your organization's organization future, future, and you, and you serve, serve the, the global, global community, community at large. At large. Um, um, to, to actively, actively and positively affect the organization's, the organization's sustainability, sustainability or your, or your church's, church's sustainability. sustainability. So, so, so we're serving, we're serving our followers, followers we're, serving we're serving our church's, church's future, future, and we're serving our stakeholders. Our stakeholders. The, first the first way that you serve, serve your followers, followers is making them lifelong, lifelong learners. learners. You've, You've got, got to teach them. them. 
And so and when so it when comes to these, these kinds of things, things it's, it's not, not just, just about, about having a vision, vision for the church. I know this is where I want my church to go, but where do you want your members to go? How do you want them to grow? And then vision, it means that you're forward looking, you're seeing this person as viable, worthy, um, and you're and going, you're going to, to assist them in reaching their potential. Their potential. And now, and now Dr. Dr. I mean, I mean Robert, Robert Greenleaf, Greenleaf, he's the father of servant, uh, servant, servant leadership. leadership. He, says, he says, we should, we should all ask ourselves, do, do, I, do, do the people, people I serve grow? grow? And, at and at the, the end, end of the day, day as, as a leader, leader am, am I growing, growing up people? people? And then, and then secondly, secondly we're, we're empowering, empowering our members to use the knowledge that they've learned. Followers, Followers must be empowered to effectively shape, shape change based, based on their learning and development. And, development. and so and empowerment so is entrusting power to others, it's giving, giving it away, away. Allowing, allowing them to do it. It, it involves it effective listening, listening making, making people feel significant, and, and putting the emphasis on teamwork and valuing the love and equality. And the leader's ultimate goal is to make leaders out of your followers. That's, That's really, really the, the way, way we grow. That's, That's really, really the way, way we maintain and, and do, do greater do things. Because it's, it's one of you, and then, and then but, but you can you multiply your efforts, your efforts if, if all, all of you, if you, you make, make leaders out of your followers. followers. And, now, and now, then we, we serve, serve our church's, church's future. future. We, we cast, cast a vision. vision. When we cast a vision, it links the present to the future. It energizes and garners commitment. It gives you meaning to the work that people are doing. It's helping people have, have a meaningful um, look at our church. And then it establishes a standard of excellence and integrity. And aside from just having a vision, we also need to have foresight. Foresight is defined as the ability to see what's emerging, to understand the dynamics of the larger context, and to recognize the new initial conditions as they're forming. So that means you're seeing, hey, this is happening and that's happening. How is this going to affect my church? As we look at the trends in society, as we look at the trends that are going on in our church, in our environment, how is that going to affect how we do ministry? It helps leaders anticipate the outcomes of their current actions and, and forecast future, future events. events. So, so how are the decisions that I'm making today, today going to affect the church later? later. And, and foresight involves anticipating various outcomes that can happen as we make decisions. Okay? okay? And, and then and lastly, we've, we've got, got stakeholders. stakeholders. Our, Our members, members are stakeholders. stakeholders. Your, the, the conference, conference is, are, is a stakeholder. These are, These are all people, people who you might affiliate with. These are people who you may touch. Your local community is a stakeholder. What's another stakeholder that you might have in, in your church? And when and you're when thinking, you're thinking of, stakeholders, of stakeholders, you're thinking of how who is affected by what you do. Your visitors, your guests, that's a stakeholder. Your family can be a stakeholder. Your family is affected by what you're doing at the church. Um, also, you might, even, you might even consider the fact that Christendom as a whole, what we as leaders do, they don't just see, oh, that's her doing it or that's him doing it. No, that's what Christians do. And so, what we do, it really does give someone an impression about the totality of Christendom. And so we take that responsibility, that's a heavy weight. And then we have a responsibility as a steward. A stewardship is the belief that leaders are accountable to others as well as the organization. If you've noticed when pastors or if a leader falls or has a mistake, they don't, they're not just answering to their congregation. They're answering to the wider world. There's a lot of people who they're answering to. And there are leaders who may lead a converse, congregation, but we actually look at them as leaders in the country. You know, we look at people who are leaders in organizations more than just 
their employees because what they do in, um, affects us. And then it brings good, the steward brings good to the followers, the organization, and the society, not just the leader. And we partner with our followers to serve others. Okay? So, if you look at your packet, Ask yourself, how do you serve as a steward? How are you serving your congregation as a steward? How are you serving your church as a steward? And how are you serving your community? Those are all places that you're serving as a steward. And so think about those things. So a summary of a leader's role. First, we serve our members by helping them become lifelong learners and we help them to be empowered, be empowered to utilize, utilize their knowledge. knowledge. Then, then we, we serve our organization's future by casting a vision or giving the church direction. And, and then, then we help the church utilize foresight to see what's emerging and, and how, how it will affect our organization. organization. And, and then, then we're serving our stakeholders, our members, our members the conference, conference, our community. Our community. A, a leader, leader is a steward that is serving society and it's, and it's bringing, bringing good, good to the society, society not, not just for ourselves. ourselves. So, how, so how, do how do we go, go from, from leadership, leadership to action? How, how do these traits inform our outreach and evangelistic plans? plans? Well, well, the first, the first thing, thing we should consider, consider in our outreach plans, plans and in our evangelistic efforts is to make, make is our is members. members. We're, We're serving, serving them first. first. We're making, making them lifelong life learners. learners. And so, and so our, our plan should, should our, our members should, should know the gospel. The gospel. <laughs> they they should, should know the importance of outreach and evangelism, evangelism. Um, um, for, for their spiritual growth. It's, it's not, not just, just a, a, you know, you so, so often we talk about prayer and Bible study. Prayer and Bible study is important. But if you notice, the disciples, they spent time with Jesus, and they spent time in prayer, and then he sent them out to do something. Because, because that, that is a part, part of their, their spiritual, spiritual growth. growth. And, and so, so our, our members, members need, need to know, to know that. that. They need, they to, need know to know how to share their, their testimony, testimony in, in word and in, in deed. There, there are going to be some, some people, people who, they're, they're not going to get to sit down, down and tell them how they got saved. But they can do something kind, and it's going to be a testimony for them. They should know how to engage others in meaningful conversation, how to serve others, and how to have a personal vision for outreach for themselves, how for them to have goals in reaching others. And then we want to empower our ministers, our members, um, so that they can do what they've learned. For most, most of us, us this, this includes facilitating outreach and evangelism structures. structures. Our, our structures, structures have got, got to be multifaceted, because, because our people, people are. are. There's, There's not, not a one-size-fits-all. One size fits all. Usually, we, we like, like to come to something, and, and oh, you're going to tell me how to grow my church, and I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and it's over. But there's, but there's not, not a one-size-fits-all. One size what works at my church may not work at your church, OK? So, so, so here's some here's different, different means, means that our uh, members, these, these are members, are members at my church. church. Courtney, Courtney likes, likes to pass out sack lunches to the homeless. Davicinia, she, she likes to um, start, start spiritual, spiritual conversations with people, with people at concerts, concerts and festivals. And festivals. Uh, uh, Sheila, Sheila, she, she took, took basil, basil to a neighbor, started, started up a conversation. They're talking about Jesus. Jesus. Thomas has, has Bible studies in his home. Aisha, Aisha invites, invites her pregnant friend to our community baby, baby shower. shower. Those, Those are, are all different, different people, people, all different, different, different ways, ways that they're sharing, sharing the gospel. gospel. And, so and so our, our members, members should enjoy, enjoy what, what they're doing. doing. We, we don't, don't want to be pulling teeth. And outreach should energize our members, not wear them out. It should, it should also, also enrich, enrich them spiritually. spiritually. After, After they, they have, have been out evangelizing, evangelizing or doing outreach, they, they should, should feel invigorated. They, they should have, have a testimony. testimony. And, and, and it, it allows, allows them to see the gospel, gospel in action. action. And, and it, it should, should be uh, ongoing. ongoing. What, what are some are things that, that your, your, your members, members have done for evangelism? That, that your members, members have testified, testified to you about. about. Maybe, Maybe some, some kind of testimony, testimony about, about outreach, outreach or something. something. Okay. 
Okay, so a food program passing out food boxes. nursing home ministry. ministry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and those, those are, are probably all things that, that after, after your members, members have done, done it, they've, they've come, come back, back and told you how wonderful and how they met, you know, you know Sister, Sister Mary and they, and they met, met this person. person. Um, and, and it, it really, really does, does help enrich and grow them. them. All right. And now our plan should serve our church's future. We, we should, should have, have a, plan a plan for outreach. For outreach. And, I and I keep on talking, talking about, about a plan, plan because growth doesn't, doesn't just happen. happen. It, it happens, happens because, because we, we make it happen. happen. Evangelism, Evangelism doesn't, doesn't just happen. happen. It happens because we have a plan in place for evangelism. It happens because we want it to happen. And so, and so the first, first thing we do is we provide a vision. vision. We've got, got the, the, our church has got, got to know, know where, where they're, they're headed. headed. And, so, and so, 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 so a vision has five major things. things. It, has it has a broad, broad appeal. appeal. It, it deals, deals with, with change. change. We're talking about change. change. It encourages, it encourages faith, faith and hope. hope. It reflects high ideals, and it defines the destination and the journey. So where we're going and how we're going to get there. And then, and then it, it works, works at multiple, multiple le levels. levels. Um, um, I, used I used to work, to work for Christian Broadcasting, Broadcasting Network. Network. And, and when, when I was, I was working, working there, when I first, first started working there, we, we for, 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 for 40, 40 years, years, they, they had, had a vision to, 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 to have 500 million people receive Jesus. And I remember when we reached it. I remember when, I mean, and that does something for us, us, you know, so when they, they came, came up with that, that number, they, they came up with it thinking, thinking oh, this would oh, take us forever. forever. This, this, you know, you know Jesus, Jesus might be here before, before we get that, that number. number. But, but it was, was something that drove our ministries. So, so, so when, we when we were working, working in, in Africa, Africa, when they're, they're making new shows, shows, when they're making new videos, when they're partnering with local congregations, regardless of where they were around the world, when we were on the prayer lines in the United States, Everything we were doing was calculating, getting to that goal, and getting, keeping our eyes on the vision. And so I was very happy to be able to say, hey guys, we did it, we reached it. So we serve, the vision is gonna be for outreach, it's going to provide your congregation with a direction. It's gonna keep them forward looking. And so, and so here's some, some examples, examples of vision of statements. statements. Transforming cultures through the power of Jesus Christ. Christ. You, can you can see, see that, that, a culture transform. transform. To, to help, help restore, restore wholeness to our, to our neighborhood, neighborhood and the city. Relentlessly dedicated to reaching those outside God's family with the gospel of of Christ. Of Christ. And, so and so these are all things, things these are, are outreach-focused outreach visions of how we're going to change, change, of changing, changing our world, transforming, transforming our, cultures. our cultures. And now, and now our, our plans, plans, it serves, it serves the, future. the future. So effective, so effective plans, plans are informed by emerging trends or driving, driving forces that are affecting our church. church. Driving, driving forces, forces are important. important. So, so, so here's, here's some, some driving forces, forces that, that we all deal, deal with. with. The economy, economy globalization, globalization, the growing the Hispanic population, population, the growing the unchurched, unchurched population. population. Those, Those are external, external driving forces. forces. Internal, Internal driving forces might, might include the church, church culture, culture, financial, financial management. management. So, so how, how does the, the economy, economy affect, affect you? you? It, affects it affects how people in your congregation, congregation give. give. It increases, it increases our opportunities, opportunities and the needs, needs in the community, and it, and it creates, creates opportunity for us to serve and give hope to people. Globalization, it's, it's the, the increasing global connectivity, uh, integration and interdependence in the economy, social, technological, cultural, political, and ecological spheres of our society. And so, and so, so what, what it means, means is the world, world is getting, getting smaller. smaller. What, what happens, happens on the on other side of the world actually still, still affects you. you. That, that creates, creates new mission, mission opportunities, opportunities for us. For us. 
Uh, it connects uh, our congregation to the world around them. And it, and it increases the diversity in our community and, con and congregation. Because no longer are we just, when you go out on the block, around the block, and you're doing outreach, you're not just talking to people who have been in the church their whole lives. Or it, it, you're now doing something different. Um, you, um, you now, now have, have, you're doing, doing outreaches, and, and there's, there's a Muslim, Muslim family, family from, from Kenya. Kenya. There's, there's a Hindu, Hindu family, family from, from India. India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because the world, world is getting, getting smaller. smaller. And, and so, so as, as we're doing, doing our outreaches, outreaches they've, they've got to be able, able to cross, cross those, those barriers. Because we're not going to be able to just tell everybody, hey, you need to get saved. And they're like, saved from what? Okay. Technology. Technology. Technology, technology changes, changes the way people, people communicate. communicate. We, get we get the information, the information is, is rapidly, rapidly, rapidly just goes, goes out. out. It, it opens, opens up, up a new, new audience, audience for, for us. us. You know, you, know, you can you have, have a thousand followers on Twitter. Twitter. You, can you can have, have a blog. blog. You, you know, you there are different things. things. And, and, it, and, and it's, it's a new, new way, way to connect, connect with potential members. So it's funny, we had an outreach few weeks, weeks back, back. And, one and one of the, the young, young ladies, ladies she came back, she, she visited our church, and she said, oh yeah, I, 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 like, I liked you guys on Facebook. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, I, I might need to update that Facebook page. But people are looking at us and they're saying, okay, let me look at their website. Let me look at what else is going on with them, you know. And so they're really connecting with us. Now I'm friends with this girl on Facebook, Facebook, who, who I, just I just met from one of our outreaches, outreaches. Okay? okay? Then, then the, the growing Hispanic, Hispanic population. population. It's the it's largest large minority group, group in the United States. States. The population, the population is, is projected, projected to have a continued study, a study growth. growth. And, and so, so at, at the very least, least we've, we've got, got to overcome, overcome some, some cultural, cultural and language barriers. barriers. That, that may mean, if you're doing an outreach event, you may, may want to have, have a translator. A translator. At, all At all of our, our outreach, outreach events, events, we've, we've got, got somebody at the registration booth who speaks Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> we, have we have someone, someone you know, you know I, may I may get up, and I've had, had a, a Hispanic, Hispanic person translate because, because we had so many so Hispanics at our church. church. And, so and so those, those are just different, different things, things that inform the way we do ministry. And then the growing unchurched population. One, One third, third of adults in America, America are considered, considered unchurched. unchurched. Connecting, connection, um, connection, connection with, with the church, church is, is often informed, informed, informed by, by television. television. So, they so they think, think you, you are what they see on TV. TV. And if and they if don't they trust the guys on TV, TV they're not going to trust, trust us. us. Okay? okay? Because, because if they're, if they're not, not attending church, church, oh, well, they're just, just you know, they, they might pass by the TVN or the church, church channel. channel. And so, and so that's, that's how they know, know about church. church. And sometimes, sometimes we've got to change, change their mind. And then, and then effectiveness of come and see, of the come and see, come to my church, come, 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 come. It's really diminishing in effect. It still works some. But, but the effectiveness, the effectiveness of, it of it is diminishing. Is diminishing. Can, you Can you imagine if someone, if someone said to you, hey, why don't you come, you come to my divine, divine worship at this Buddhist, Buddhist temple? temple? You might you be might looking be a little like, like uh, that's, that's not something, not something that, that you are just usually going to come, come and see. see. And, so and so the so further that our culture, culture gets, gets away, away from, from our Christian roots, the more come and see is like somebody, somebody inviting me to a Buddhist divine, divine worship, worship, whatever, whatever that, that looks like. like. Okay? okay? And so, and so because, because of that, that that's, that's going to inform how we do outreach. outreach. Now, some, some internal, internal driving forces. forces. Um, uh, it's our, it's our church culture. culture. That's, that's our, our values, values, our norms, our, norms, our beliefs, beliefs, whether we're inclusive or exclusive, whether we're outwardly focused or inwardly focused. It's, it's how, how our, our guests, guests feel when, when they, they visit. visit. So, so if you, you have, have someone who comes, who comes in off the street and they, they have, have one jeans and a t-shirt, how, how do they, they feel? feel? Are they, are they, you know, they, they going to get, get weird, weird looks? looks. That's, that's, that's a part, a part of, of your church's, church's culture. culture. Or, or are you, you going to love them anyway? anyway? 
You know, you know we've, we've actually had, had some, some members who just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to dress, dress down, down a little bit, bit just, just so, so other, other people, people feel comfortable. comfortable. And, and that's, that's a part, a part of our church, church culture. culture. If you have, have a smaller church, church when, when we, we have, have a visitor, visitor do, they do they feel they welcome? welcome? Do we, do we make, make an announcement? Oh, everybody's going to lunch over Billy Bob's house. The visitor doesn't know who Billy Bob is. They haven't haven't received received directions. directions. And so so, 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 even even those those small type things are things that that can repel repel people. people. And then then there's there's some churches churches you go to, the church church culture, they're just just loving on you. You You get get greeted greeted five times. And I'm like, I'm going to come back here. I actually joined a couple churches that way. So... And And so so church church culture culture really really means something. something. And And that's that's something that that you can 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 affect. And And then then financial financial management. management. Um, Um, How how are we preparing preparing for the future future when it comes comes to our our money? money? Are we we considering considering our savings? savings? Are we we considering considering building building upkeep? Because because building expenses, it really can drain our budget. That's honestly the majority of what's coming out. Um, and, and how, how much, much money, money are we using for evangelism? Is, is there an outreach budget or an evangelistic budget? Is it coming out of what people are giving, or is it are we dependent on outside funding? If we're dependent on outside funding, are we going to look for more funding so that we can have these outreach ventures and do uh, evangelism? And then finally. How are our plans serving our community? Our outreach plans should not only build up the church, but they've got to build up the community. If you're not there, the community should feel it. They should want you there. They should want to know that you're there. And so we should include programs that improve the world around us. Okay? And it sounds like you guys are doing it. Um, That verse says, when I was hungry, I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. You clothed me, I was sick. You visited me when I was in prison. You came to me. Those are the things that Jesus is actually looking back on us and saying. You know, sometimes we look at holiness and... The word word says says in John, it says, love love not just just in word and in talk, but but in action and and deed. deed. And that's that's something something that that we have have got got to consider consider as as we are looking looking at at our community. community. It's It's not not just, just, okay, come to my church church and get get saved, saved, which they need to do. But it is, man, am I loving them in my deed. Okay? okay, and so, and so we're thinking, thinking of new ways, ways we can do, do that. that. So, so, so as, as we, we develop, develop a strategic plan, plan how, how are we, we're gonna, we're gonna first, first look at ourselves, ourselves and see exactly where, where we stand, stand. And, then and then how are we gonna, gonna shape, shape our future, our future. Okay? okay? Now there and are there some activities, I actually skipped a couple of them, but go back through the workbooks so that you are able to do this for your church and for your congregation. Okay? So, when we are assessing who we are, we do what's called a market segment analysis. It's really defining our market. Okay? So the, de- the definition, who are we trying to reach? Okay, Okay. that That might be be a geographical geographical area. area. You might be be trying trying to reach reach your zip zip code. code. You might might be be trying to reach this zip code code and that that zip code, code. but But how are you defining defining that? that? And then then what are the needs that you provide? What needs do you as a church, as a congregation, how can you help people? And then what are some preferences? That means, say for instance, you provide, you provide spirituality, spirituality. But, but if you, if you want, want, you prefer, prefer some, some great, great music, music, come to our to church. Our church. <laughs> or if or you if prefer, prefer some, um, a, real a real family, family environment, environment, come to our church. church. And, so and so what, what are, are your, your preferences? preferences? If you, if prefer, you prefer a Seventh-day Adventist day church, church. <laughs> come, come to, to our, our church. church. If you prefer, uh, there, and so that's what it means by preferences. What's our little niche? How are we a little different? Each of our churches are a little different from the other. Okay? okay? And then, and then what's, what's our potential, potential reach? reach? The way you figure out your potential reach is if you've got, got a geographical, geographical area, 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 
of a zip code, code how many people, people in that zip code? code. That's, that's, your, that's, that's your potential, potential reach, reach, okay? okay. So, so you, might you might have the have potential to reach 30,000 people. people. And then, then who are you actually, actually reaching? reaching? So you, so might, you might actually, actually be reaching, reaching 100, 100, okay? okay. And then, and then what, are what are we competing we against? against? And when, and when we, we talk, talk about what we're competing against, we're not just talking about other churches. No, we're talking about the, the other, other entities, entities that are that providing, providing those same, same needs, needs that, that we can meet, okay? okay. So here's, so here's an, an example of a market segment, market segment analysis, analysis for Riverside, for Riverside Chapel, Chapel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Church. Our, Our segment, segment definition, definition we're, we're focusing, focusing on North, North and East Nashville. Nashville. So, that's so that's the zip, zip codes, codes of 37206, 37207, which is the zip code the church is in, and 37208. We've established, We've established a market, a market that, that includes commuters, commuters. So, we've so we've got, got a lot of people who commute from different parts, parts of the city, but we, we want to focus our outreach efforts on this general area. And we're, and we're a, a characteristic, we're a Christian, Christian place of worship. worship. What, what needs do we serve? serve? Spiritual, Spiritual development, development. Personal, personal development. development. People, people change, change for the better. better. Coming to church. church. Social, Social and recreation, we provide that for people. people. Community, Community services, uh, opportunity, opportunity to help, help people. people. And so and those, those are needs that everybody has, has that, that uh, well, a lot, a lot of people, people have. have. And so, so we, we provide, provide those, those for people. people. Um, our, our preferences, preferences Christian, Spirit Field, uh, Adventist, Seventh day Adventist, Adventist African, African, American, American Diaspora. Um, what, um, what is our, our potential, potential customers? customers? In those, those three zip codes, codes there's 80,750 80, people. people. Our, our current, current share of the market, market is 0.2%. <laughs> and, so and so that, that kind of gives, gives you an, an estimation of where you are concerning who you're, who you're actually reaching. reaching. And then, and then who's, who's our, our indirect, indirect competition? competition. Now again, now, yeah, indirect yeah, competition, yeah, competition yeah, is not, not the people who are doing the same thing you're doing, doing but, but who are the other people who might, might meet spiritual, spiritual development, development and personal, and personal development. development? So, so you've, you've got, got tele-evangelists. Tele people, people, people think that's, that's their church. church. <laughs> you've, you've got other nonprofits. People are volunteering and they're, you know, Meeting, meeting those, those needs. needs. You've got, got self-help self -help gurus and self-help, self -help. there's, there's own. own. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's the other, other things. things. There's, there's social clubs and organizations, organizations all other, other ways, ways to meet some, some of those, those needs. needs. And, so and so when you, you look, look at, at your, your demographics, demographics we've, we've got, got our zip code that, that our church is in, is 37207. It's 72% African American, 61% single parent, and most, and most of that, of that is single, single mothers. mothers. The, the uh, household, household income, income is $29,703, and 21% of the population, of the population is, is below, below the poverty, the poverty line, line, depending, depending on which study you look at. at. Uh, uh, there's, there's some, some that, that say, say even, even worse, worse than, than that, that. Okay? okay? And so, and so, so that, that right there informs us of how we can help people. We know, we know that, that we've, we've got, got a lot, lot of single moms. moms. So, we so we have baby, baby showers. showers. <laughs> and, and that's the way, that's how this type, type, type of thing, once you understand, understand your audience, audience that's, that's how, how it informs, it informs your, your outreach. outreach. In, In your, your booklet, booklet, you, you see a market, market seg segment, segment analysis, analysis sheet, sheet so that you can do the same thing for your own church. And I also recommend that you go through and learn the demographics of your own area so you know what your, who your audience is. And once you understand, as you, the more you understand who you are, then you are able to maximize your capabilities and resources. Okay? So your plan should maximize your strengths and avoid, and avoid your weaknesses. weaknesses. How many, How many times, times have we looked at other churches and said, oh, oh man, man, if I just had whatever, whatever they had. had. <laughs> and we and went, oh, oh man, man, I wish, well, well if you, you don't, don't have, have it, it, avoid, avoid it. it. That's, that's not, not, that's that's not, not your, your lane. lane. And so, and so we, we figure, figure out what's our lane and how we can maximize it. And so one way to do this is a SWOT analysis, okay? And SWOT analysis, you've got Four boxes, boxes, you're looking, you're looking at, at your strengths strength and your weaknesses. And after, and after you, you see your strengths strength and your weaknesses, for every strength, strength you have an opportunity. opportunity. And, for and for every, every weakness, weakness it's, it's a threat. threat. Okay? okay, and so, and so we're, we're 
capitalizing on our strengths and our opportunities, and we're minimizing our threats. So say, for instance, your strength is you've got members who are willing to work. Your members are willing to work, and then you've got a growing population of college students. Willing to work, you've got young adults in your church. That's what everybody wants. So that creates opportunities for you. And so, and so you should you do should initiatives, initiatives that, that require, require manpower, manpower. Okay? okay? And, and then, then you've, you've got, got some opportunities, opportunities to do some college outreach, outreach. Some, some outreach on college campuses, campuses because, because you've got, got a lot of college students. students. Now say, say for, for instance, instance your weakness, weakness is offering husband love. You, you don't have, have a lot of money. money. So, so your threat, it's a lack of finances, okay? So how does that inform our outreach? We want, we want to do, do something, something that, that is centered, centered on manpower, manpower rather, rather than money. money. We, want we want to do, do something, something that, that utilizes, utilizes our college population. population. We, want we want to use, use a go and, and tell, tell approach. approach. We, we want, want because, because our people, people are willing, willing to work, to work we, we want to put, put them, them to work. work. Go, go and tell, tell not, not just come and see. see. Instead of just, we might not have the money for big attractional events. So, so therefore, therefore, we've, we've got to make sure our people, people know how to go and tell. And, and then, then they, they will develop, develop that, that come and see. And, and then, then we need something that requires minimal finances. finances. Outreach, Outreach can be done without, without a lot of finances. There's, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we make excuses. excuses. Well, oh, well, we can't do this. So let me ask you, which outreach activities fit these resources? Can you rake leaves? For your, For your neighbors? neighbors? Can you Can pick, you up, pick trash? up trash? Can you, Can you have, have Israel and New Breed, an Israel and New Breed concert at your church? church. No, no, you, you can't, can't afford, afford it. it. You, you've, you've got, got minimal, minimal, we're talking about, about minimal finances. finances. Can, we Can we pass, pass out cool pops or popsicles at a summer festival? Can we afford some popsicles? Okay. Can we have a big, huge harvest fest? Maybe, Maybe, depending, depending on, what on what your money, money looks, looks like. like. Or, or depending on what you do at your harvest fest. Can, can you, you do, do a, a free, free car wash? Car wash supplies don't cost that much. Okay? okay? And, and so, so these, these are all outreach activities, activities that fit that, that SWOT analysis. analysis. It's, it's using, using manpower, manpower it's using utilizing our college, our young adults, and it's not taking a lot of resources as far as financial resources. And so and there you see you have a SWOT analysis for your own church. church. So you so can you look, look and see, see hey, hey, what are what our strengths? strengths? What are what we, are we good, good at? at? You, you might have, have a lot of health. health. Like, like at our, our church, church, we have a lot of health care professionals. professionals. We've, got We've got some, some great, great cooks, cooks, some, some raw foodists, foodists who like doing like cooking classes. classes. Okay, that's a strength for us. And so our opportunity is cooking classes. And we do cooking classes for the community. We get a good turnout. Uh, you, uh, might you might have, have some weaknesses, weaknesses too, though. though. And, so and so whatever, whatever those things are, that's, that's what you put on here. here. And, and be honest. honest. It's, it's always, always best to be honest on your SWOT analysis, analysis because, because then you know exactly what you're working, 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 working with. with. And, and remember, remember, you build upon your, your strength, strength and, and you, you avoid your your weaknesses, okay? So if you don't have a high-tech church, then... Until, Until you, you get, get there, there. <laughs> don't, don't try, try to build, to build a high tech, tech what have you, okay? okay? So what so are some strategic goals, goals that we could have? have. Um, um, I, I chose, chose four, four to, transform to transform our congregation, our congregation into evangelists. How many, How many of us would love that? that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, to, to increase, increase our, our church's, church's name, name recognition, recognition within, within our community. How many of us want our people to know that we're here? Okay? Grow, grow the number, number of visitors, visitors who come to our church. church. How many, How many want more visitors? visitors. Okay. okay. And, and then, then increase the number of returning visitors. visitors. I don't just I want you to show up once. once. I, want I want you to come, come back. back. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to go, go over, over some, some strategies, strategies that, that will hit each one of these points. Okay. 
The first first point, point, we want want our our congregation congregation to be evangelists. evangelists. So guess guess what we need to do? We need to train our congregation. congregation. Okay? Okay. Every Every member member can be involved involved in outreach outreach as a a prayer, a bringer, bringer, and a a teller. teller. Okay? Okay. Prayers, Prayers, that that means means they can can pray pray for the success of every outreach outreach event. event. They They can can pray pray for the people people we're trying to reach. They can can have their own list of people they want to reach, okay? Bringers, each member can invite someone to an outreach event. And tellers, most people have a few tellers in their church, people who will go and tell others about Jesus. But our goal is to make everybody a teller. Because right now, everybody's not a teller. Okay? Okay. So So prayers. prayers. Everybody Everybody can pray. pray. So So what do we, we we can give give our congregation congregation evangelistic evangelistic prayer prayer points. points. Hey, Hey, put it in their their minds all the time. time. Hey, we're praying praying for this. this. The more you have have something something before before you, the more you do it. And then we can help every member develop their own list of people they're praying for. A great resource for this is the Share Him. Share Him app, you can download it on your iPhone or your Android, or there's booklets, and they're like a quarter. Um, and it helps your people develop a list of people who they're praying for every day, so that's constantly before them, okay? So we always need prayers. Then we need bringers. We have to not just tell everybody, okay, bring somebody to church. That's That's general, general. most people people don't don't really really listen listen to you when you say that. that. But we train train our members members to invest invest and invite. Invest, Invest, that that means means spending time and energy energy into into building that that relationship. relationship. You You invest invest in this person. person. You talk talk to them, you might go out for tea or what have you. And then 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 you you invite. invite. Then you invite them to church. Um, That way, when you're investing and you're inviting, it's not just this random, oh, come with me, come with me. My mom, for example, she, um, she's in school, she's working on her doctorate, and she has this guy who's helped her. He's from India, he's Hindu. He's helped her on her homework. You know, they, they talk, she's helped them when they, his car was broke down. Well, International, International Day comes at her, at her church, church, and she, and she says, says, hey, will you come and carry, carry the Indian, Indian flag? flag. Now, now you, it's, it's going to take, take something, something to get me to go to a Hindu service, because this, this is a is Hindu, Hindu gentleman. gentleman. But, but he was he at church that Saturday. Why? Why? Because, because we've invested, invested and we've, we've invited. invited. Okay? okay? And so, and so and we, we also created a special event to bring them to. Okay? okay? And then, and then think, think of some, some special ministries, ministries um, that, that might, might serve a need. That could be a divorce recovery. It could be Alzheimer's recovery. It could be Alcoholics Anonymous. A ministry that is providing a need for the community. And then having special events to bring people to. And then again, personal invitation is the most effective in reaching others. You can send out all the postcards you want, and you can have a big billboard, and you can put it on the radio. But honestly, the majority of the people who are gonna respond have had personal touch. We just had a um, baby shower, and after our baby shower, we had a community baby blessing at church. And so so we we had had a lot lot of moms, moms, I mean, it was a line around the building building for people for for the baby baby shower. They They were getting getting diapers diapers and clothes and and car seats. seats. So you you know know they they showed showed up, up, right? right? Well, Well, you you didn't have the same same response response at the baby baby blessing. blessing. However, However, those those who came knew somebody at our church. One person, their social worker, another, their friend. I mean, they had a connection. When we were in the reception, I was looking at the families who came to our, back to our church for that service, and everyone, say maybe one or two, had somebody from our church who they knew. 
and who had invited them. And so that personal invitation, it does mean a lot. And then how can we make people into tellers? They have to be trained in how to have meaningful spiritual conversations. They should know how to share their testimony and be able to share encouragement. Sometimes you're not going to have a, a chance to go through the whole gospel or to go through the whole, you know, the 28 fundamental beliefs, you know, of your church. But do you know how to help someone when they're hurting? Do you know how to comfort someone? You know how to encourage someone who's discouraged? Those, Those are things, things that our congregation, congregation needs to know. And then, and then another strategy, strategy that, we that we use for outreach is, is utilizing and partnering with pre-existing community platforms. Utilizing, utilizing and partnering with existing community platforms. Existing partnering with existing community community platforms. platforms. That, that means, means you're, you're finding community events, events and you're, and you're participating, participating in them. Your church, Your church doesn't, doesn't have, have to finance it, it, it doesn't, doesn't have to or organize it, it, and it, and it doesn't, doesn't have to promote it. There's, There's a lot, lot of people gathered. You, you can go, go out, out there. there. You can you gain, gain name, name recognition. recognition. That's, That's one, one of the one things, things you will gain. gain. And, and then, then it creates a social consciousness within the community, like, hey, I remember, that's that church. And it maximizes your greatest resources, your people. Some major, Some major events, events in the Nashville, Nashville area. area. Country, Country Music, music Marathon. Marathon. That, that attracts 30,000 30, people. people. CMA, CMA Music Fest. That, that attracts, that attracts 250,000 250, people. people. Fourth, Fourth of July. July. That attracts 125,000 people. people. When, when was, was the last time, time tens, tens of thousands of people were banging on your doors to come to your church? And, and so, so there, there are going to be people, people in these events, events that A, would never, never come to our church. church. But, but we, we get, get to change, change their, their mind, mind um, about, about who we are. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, man. Oh, thanks. Oh, man. Oh, man. The church did that? There's a church in, um, I want to say it's Washington State. For a long time in their community, they were known as the Popsicle Church. Because, you know, it was, it was a, a new, new church, church but, but every, every event, event they were passing out popsicles. popsicles. And, so and so people knew, knew you know, they, they had, had that name. name. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's the popsicle, popsicle church. church. <laughs> and, and, and even if we're known, known as the popsicle, popsicle church, church, whether you're the, you're the bubble, bubble church, church, it doesn't matter. But the, but the fact, fact that people, people know who you are, are you're, you're going to these major events, and you're able to provide a simple need. Okay? okay? It eliminates the cost of promotion and advertising, which is one of the major expenses. Uh, you don't have to attract the crowd. How many times have we been praying that someone shows up? And every community has an established community event. Every community, whether you're in a small church or a big church, if you're in Jolton or whether you're in Nashville, Every, Every county, county has, has certain, certain things, things that, that they, they do. do. And then and it then helps the community, the community develop, develop a favorable opinion of you. And so all, and so of, all of a sudden, sudden they're like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, those oh, are that, 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 that church that, that does that. that. And so there, there are, are different things, things that, that you can do, do to get your, your name recognized, recognized within, within the community. community. So people begin to know who you are. So then when you say, oh, I'm pastor of such and such Seventh-day Adventist church, people aren't looking at you crazy. They're like, oh, I've seen you guys around. Oh, I know who you are. Another strategy for outreach is servant evangelism. Servant evangelism demonstrates the kindness of God by offering some simple act of humble, humble service, service with, with no, no strings, strings attached. attached. Okay, okay, so, so serving, serving evangelism, evangelism is equal to deeds, deeds of love plus, plus words of, of love plus, plus adequate, adequate time. time. So, so deeds, deeds of love, love you all might go and pass, pass out, out bubbles, bubbles in the park, park or, or pass, pass out water. water. Let's, Let's say, say your hot day, day we're, we're in the, in the south, south, you're passing out water. It's free? Why are you all doing this? 
That That gives you the opportunity opportunity to to say say words of love love because because Jesus Jesus loves loves you and we just want want you to know that today today. because Because we we want want you to know know that the the grace of God is free. free. And so this water is free because grace is free, okay? So now there's words of love and then there's adequate time. You know, sometimes we want stuff to happen overnight. Most people, it takes five touches before they get saved. They need need to get, get, you know, know, they they get get touched touched here, here, they're touched touched here. here. Oh, this this is another another Christian. Christian. And then then it it takes, it usually takes takes a little bit before before they're they're ready to jump in the pool, pool, you know? know? And And so so that adequate time, one person sows the seed, another one waters the seed, and God brings the increase. One thing that you do when you do these is you carry a connect card that accompanies each project. And that connect card, we have one at our church, and it says, we just wanted to let you know that Jesus loves you and we want a chance to. And so it says, God loves you and we want a chance to. That, that, that's what it says on one side, you turn it over, it says Riverside, Nashville, our service times, you know. And so it's just a, like a business card, and it helps you connect with the people people you're you're ministering ministering to. So So it's not not like like, like, you do it and they're like, like, who was that? (laughs) You're you're giving giving that to them. them. And now now, the service service projects projects are characterized by being low low risk risk and high high grace, grace. okay? Okay. Low Low risk risk means a low low rate of rejection for our members, (laughs) okay? You know, how many times times have we wanted our members to go go out and knock on doors and pray for people or go out and do this? And you've got some some members who just don't don't need to be told no. no. (laughs) And so so they're they're not not willing to do it. it. And And then then it's it's high high grace. grace. That high grace means you need the presence of God to make you successful. Okay? We need God to help us. So here's the quadrant. You've got high risk, low grace events events, or or things, things, you know, know, types types of evangelism. evangelism. That's That's more of a confrontational approach. approach. It tends tends to discourage discourage our members. members. And it's it's usually usually very uncomfortable uncomfortable for our young young adults. adults. They They probably probably won't won't do it. it. And and so so you've probably participated in a few of these events, you know. Or you've, or you've seen, seen people, people doing, doing these, these, these kind of things. things. You'll, you'll see, see that, that street, street preacher who's telling everybody they're going to hell. Going to hell. Uh, <laughs> repent or, or, you know. And that's, and that's not to say that that's, that's a bad thing, thing what they're, they're doing. doing. But, but it's, it's very, very high, high risk. risk. Usually, usually low, low, gr- low grace. grace. Okay? okay? Then and there's low risk and low grace. It's not much risk involved. But there's not much much Holy Spirit Spirit at work work either. You know, that's picking picking up the the phone book. You're new in town. You pick up the phone book and call everybody and say, come to my church. It's not the most effective plan of outreach, okay? You can do it. It shouldn't hurt. But it's not very effective, okay? There's high risk, high grace. These are those power evangelism moments where we are fighting against the prince of darkness and winning, okay? And And foreign foreign missions is God shows up powerfully, Um, but it it can't be manufactured, manufactured. and And most most of our congregation congregation does not stay stay here. here. They don't don't usually live here. here. Now, Now, last last year, year, we did an outreach. I had, I was was leaving a member's house, house, and I'm telling you something in my head, it was the Holy Ghost, saying, I want to go to a New Age festival and pray for people. And I want God God to show up and tell them, you know, know, why why, why seek a living God God among the dead? There's going to be sorcerers there. There's going to be, you know, know, there's going to be mediums. There's going to be all these other people there. I said, I think God wants me to go. I mean, it hit me when I was in the car. I get in the house. I Google Nashville New Age Festival. And sure enough, there's one in 10 days. And I'm like, okay. So I go and I call the number. Their Their booths booths have been been booked booked since January, January, and it's it's May. May. And so the lady's like, um, and they've got got a waiting waiting list. list. She was was like, like, uh, what do you do? do? I said, I I pray pray and God God talks. talks. (laughs) And she's she's like, like, okay. And so you kind of tell God, you know, people what God is saying. I was like, yes, I'm like that. 
And she and goes, she goes so, 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 so. now she, yeah, of she course, is like, like a psychic, psychic herself, herself and has like a like new age, age store, store with like crystals, crystals and all that kind of fun stuff. And she's like, well, can you do it over the phone? Sure. God talks over the phone. And so I pray for her. And after and I, you know, and I was praying, and you know, God, God was just, just speaking, speaking as, as we were praying. praying. And when I got done, she was like, wow, you would bring so much healing and comfort to the people. And she was like, wow. She said, I've got a long waiting list, but nobody's doing like you. Of course nobody is. This was, this right here was definitely one of those power moments, okay? This, this was, was God, God showing, showing up, up and showing out and saying, saying no, no, this is high risk, because people might think I'm crazy, crazy, but it was but it high risk because the power of God, God was moving. moving. And, and so, so she, she says, says, well, if, if she, she said, are you local? local? I said, I am. She, she said, well, if I have somebody cancel, I'll call you. I tell you, I got banners made. I got my everything from my boo. I said, I said, hey, guys, guys we're going, going to this new age festival. festival. I lined up my prayer warriors. I mean, I we're mean, going. going. <laughs> it was, it was Friday. Friday. I mean, I, I, it, was it was Friday. Friday. And, and I, I am, she hadn't, hadn't called, called yet. yet. I called my, my sister. sister. I said, Andrew, come on, we got to pray. pray. We got to pray, pray because, because I know God wants us to do it. And I tell you, she called me. I was on my way there. I was on my way to the bank to get the money for the boo. Because I, I, I knew, I said, if I go home, I'm not going to make it. So I was just on my way there because I knew I was supposed to be there. And on the way there, she called. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we had such an awesome time there. We were praying for people, and we saw evangelism 101. We would pray for the husband, and he'd go tell his wife, go to that boo. We would, we would pray, pray for, for this person, person and they'd go tell somebody else. The, the other psychics were coming to us. We're, we're praying, praying for psychics and mediums. Medium. I, mean, I mean, the lady, the lady who was who over the festival, festival she, she was sending was people to us. And, and this, this one, one guy, guy, he walks in our booth and he goes, who are you guys? What are you guys doing? You guys don't belong here. You guys aren't like everybody else. We're like, he's like, what? This is a church. Yeah. yeah. I said, how, how did you know? He's like, well, I saw your booth and I just saw a bright light in it. He said, I mean, you know, like the, I just saw brightness and I knew it wasn't like anybody else. So I just had to come in here to see what was going on. And that was just God. And then the last day, last day of the festival was two days. Last day, last person, she walks in the booth and she's in tears. And she, and she says, says you pray, pray for my daughter. daughter. She, she said, I was, I was raised, raised in the church. church. I was raised Methodist, but, but I did not raise my children in the church. church. So, they so they didn't, didn't grow, grow up going to church. But, and, and my, my daughter, daughter recently told me she didn't she even believe, believe there was a God. God. She, she said, said and she came to your booth and you prayed for her. And she said, maybe there's something to this God. Because, because nobody knew, knew what, what, what she, she was, was saying. saying. But, but she, she said, said maybe, maybe this God is real. And, and this woman was in tears, tears because, because her, her baby, baby girl had, had told, told her she, she didn't she believe God, God existed. Exists. And, and then, then she, she comes, comes. God, God shows, shows up, up, and, and all, all of a sudden she's, she's like, no, there must be something to this God. That's power. That's, That's when God, God is just showing up and showing out. You can't, you can't make, make that stuff up. up. <laughs> you can't, can't manufacture it. it. But it's but up to God. God. It's, it's God, God and his sovereignty when God, God decides that's what I'm going to do. do. And, and then, then the, 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 the fourth, fourth quadrant is, is low, low risk, risk high risk. risk. That, that means, means this, this doesn't, doesn't cost too much time, too much, time, too much resources. resources. But, but God's, God's presence, presence makes, makes it effective. It effective. Most, Most Christians, Christians can, can do this quadrant and, and can be comfortable here. here. The, the, we, we do, do these, these kinds of events at, at, at our, 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 church. our church. You would be, be amazed, amazed how anointed passing, passing out bubbles at, at the, the park, park can be. <laughs> because, because it opens up the door for the gospel. 
you would be amazed at what paying for somebody's visit to the laundromat can do. I mean, we've seen the owners in tears. Like, I can't believe you would do something this kind for us. And all we can say is, well, that's because God's grace is free. God loves you. And reminding people of that, that is low risk. Most people don't refuse money. <laughs> they don't refuse help. And it's very much so high grace because God still shows up. All right. Um, then lastly, intentionally connecting your guests to your church. This is another strategy. Uh, we, talk we talk about, about things, things about going, going out, out, but we, we need, need to do, do something, something when they visit. visit. You know, you know outreach, outreach will get them to the door, but you, you got to have, have a process, process in place, place <laughs> to keep them coming back, back okay? okay? So, so, so develop, develop a plan, plan to, to process, process your visitors. visitors. Use, Use of greeters. greeters. Um, each visitor should be greeted three or four times before entering the service. I was talking to somebody recently, and they were telling me about visiting a church. And they said, man, they, 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 they greeted me in the parking lot. Before I opened the front door, they greeted me. Then I got through the door, they greeted me. And then before I got in the service, it was like, man, I was ready to join. They were so nice, I wanted to come back. And it's, it's just that level of... Feeling, feeling welcome. welcome. And, so and so making, making sure, sure feeling, feeling welcome, welcome doesn't, doesn't just happen. happen. Usually, Usually it, it takes, takes a process, process, especially as our churches, churches grow, grow or sometimes, sometimes as our churches, churches are really established. established. We, talk we talk to, to the, the same people over and over again. again. But having a process to make sure everyone who comes in feels welcome. And then, um, at the end of the service, making sure they feel welcome. Because their experience hasn't ended until they've left. And so one thing you can do is the three minute rule. Have leaders spend the first three minutes after the end of service making sure all guests feel welcome and inviting them back. So that they don't just greet you when you come and then they're leaving by themselves, by themselves. Nobody, nobody says, says anything. anything. Okay? okay, it's, it's making, making sure people, people feel welcome. welcome. And, and then, then it's, it's following up with and keeping, and keeping track, track of our guests. guests. A, guest a guest card collects, collects the information. information. Hey, you, you can, can have, have somebody, somebody call them that Sunday. Sunday. You, you can, can have, have a pastoral letter, letter sent out on Monday. You can you have the small group leader send out a letter on Wednesday. You can, you can call them on Friday and, <laughs> and invite them back to church. church. And, so and so just, just that, that kind of processing, I'm telling, I'm telling you, the churches, churches I, went I went to a church, church once, once, and it was, it was on a Sunday, Sunday night. night, it was a Sunday, Sunday evening, evening service. service. You know, you when know, I got I home from work Monday, Monday I, had I had brownies at my door and a and note from the pastor. pastor. <laughs> I, went I went back to that, I ended up joining that church for a while. And so, and so I only, I only say, say that, that because, because how we process our visitors, our visitors and our guests really makes a big difference of keeping, keeping that, that retention. Okay? okay? So, so in, in summary, summary outreach, outreach and evangelism doesn't, doesn't just happen. happen. It, it requires, requires a plan. plan. Our plans, our plans must, must serve, serve our members, members the, the church, church, and our community. Our community. As pastors, As pastors it must, we, must, we must take the lead in creating a vision for outreach for both our members and the church. Our plan should anticipate the ever-changing world by identifying driving forces, okay? Those were the things like globalization, technology, growing uh, Hispanic population, growing unchurched population, our church, our church culture, culture. We, we need to need anticipate, anticipate these driving, driving forces. forces. And then, and then to, to develop, develop a strategic plan, plan we, we must first take an honest inventory of who we, we are, are, what are our resources, our capabilities, our weaknesses, and, and where, it, where, where we stand, stand in our community. community. And, then and then based on our strengths, strengths we, should we should plan some strategic, some strategic goals. goals. And, and then, then these goals should each have, we should have a strategy to reach, to reach and, and implement, implement each of our goals, okay? okay.
All, All right. right. Any, Any questions? questions? If you, if you uh, uh, notice, notice throughout, throughout your, your um, throughout this, this packet, packet there, were there were questions, questions for you to fill out. out. Take, Take it home and fill it out and, and apply it to your church. church. Okay? okay. And then, and the, then last the last thing I have for you guys, guys on the on very in the very, very back, back of your, of your booklet. booklet some, some outreach, outreach ideas. ideas. These, These are, are all, all very cost effective. effective. They can, they can be, be done, done in a, in a very, very, in a wide variety of, of places. places. And, and so, so things, things that you can, can do at sporting, sporting events, 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 college campuses, campuses downtown, downtown shopping, shopping centers, centers colleges, colleges, holidays, holidays around, around houses, houses, at the, at the park. park. And so, and so it's, it's giving you some new ideas for outreach, okay? Okay, okay, so, so for, for the three-minute three minute rule, rule, say, say for instance, instance you had appointed, appointed all, all your Sabbath, Sabbath school, school leaders, leaders, all your, all your Sabbath, Sabbath school teachers, teachers or, or all your small group leaders, leaders. And, you and you say, say to them, them for, the for the first three, three minutes after, after the service ends, ends I, want I want you to go and greet those visitors that we have, okay? So what that means is you're really appointing people to do that. Um, and, um, and so, so you've, you've got, got five Sabbath, Sabbath school leaders, leaders or what have you, and they're, they're spending, spending that time, time once, once the, they're, they're being, being ushered out, out they're, they're making, making their, their way and, and saying, hey, hey thanks, thanks so, so much, much for coming. coming. Please, Please come, come back. back. Hey, you know, you know I would, I would love, love for you to come to my Sabbath school the next time you come or inviting them back to your church, inviting them to a small group. And so it's really, it works out best when you have appointed people to do that. Is that helpful? Help, 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 help. Okay. 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 Any, Any other, other questions? questions? All righty then. Well, I guess, well, I guess that's, that's a wrap. wrap. Those, Those are the are references. references. The references are also included in your booklet. booklet. Yay. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. If, if you, you all, all would, would do, do yeah. yeah. Well, good. Well, good. I'm glad.